going to be part two to the Great Dane engine overhaul. While breaking this engine down, I discovered jug number one has got a blown head gasket right at where the jug meets the block. So I'm not just going to replace one head gasket, I'm going to replace both. I priced them out on Amazon, they're $22 a head gasket. You have to take in consideration, I'm going to have to replace the intake gaskets, the exhaust gaskets, the valve cover gaskets, and the four nut gaskets that go on top of the valve covers. And also, while I'm this far into it, I'll probably replace the top main gasket. This engine's already had the lower main and the sump seal replaced. So if you add all that together, you would have been probably about $80 plus shipping. So you're probably looking at around $100 for the gaskets, maybe a little bit more. So I did what every normal person would do was I went on eBay. And for $12.50, I got a complete gasket set for the Vanguard engine. This should be as good as all the OEM parts on Amazon, right? I hope so. Or in 50 hours, I'll be taking it back down and redoing everything. As a side note, one other thing I noticed on this engine while breaking it down was all of the magnets were basically just held on by compacted dirt. I went ahead and took them off, cleaned the surface with a Dremel wire brush, and then each one of these has been re-epoxied on into the exact spot it was. So now, this should be good as new. This had to come off because the charging system is a single wire for the Great Dane, so I took it off the 18 horsepower and installed it on the 16. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that the only difference in the horsepower between 16 and 18 on one of these Vanguards is the jetting in the carburetor. I've got the other 18 already taken apart. That's the one with the broken rod on the previous video. When I take this one apart, we're gonna measure the cylinders and see if they're the same. If they are, I'll be installing the 18 horsepower carburetor back onto this unit to make this an 18 instead of the 16. Because like I said, all I think it is is the jet on the main carburetor. There's heavy oil build up right here. And I believe it's the head gasket in between the block and the jug where the valves go back and forth. It just drips when the engine's running. That looks to be the only spot that oil looks to be heavy. So we are going to uh, be replacing this head gasket along with the other side intake and exhaust seals. The sump seal's already been replaced. Did replace the stator on this unit. Uh, this is the stator off the 18 horsepower. Single wire instead of the double. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna break down this engine. Got to deal with what you got though. I'm going to take off the throttle assembly, 13 millimeter, and we'll just buzz them off. We're going to try to keep all the linkages together. The important thing is just to make sure you make a note on where they come loose from. Spinning around, we're going to go ahead and take the intake off. 13 millimeter also on this intake. You have to pop this one with a mallet. I don't really have a mallet, I got a ceramic block. We're just gonna go to pop. Now that we've got the manifolds off, this is kind of interesting. This one might not have exhaust gaskets. It's got these uh, quarter inch thick 
spacers that I haven't seen before. I might just reuse those. I'm gonna switch back over to the 10 millimeter. Buzz off these little nuts. I just replaced these valve cover seals and these guys not too long ago. Really important not to stab yourself in a situation like that, so never put your hand here as your prime. Okay, I had to use a wood chisel to get that started. Normally don't recommend doing that, but sometimes you have to just break the seal. And the gaskets are still good on this one. This gasket has been leaking. There's a very good amount of RTV in here. I'll probably just go ahead and replace both. One's leaking, I'm just gonna replace both. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take these valve rockers off. And we will take 10 millimeter. This engine's like a 93 model by the, uh, the code and spec. So it's got the earlier style rocker arms. I say it's a 93, but I'm looking down here and it does have a, a code. It's actually showing a 98 model. This jug does show signs that the exhaust, the valve guide is leaking a little bit, but not going to be replacing that so you can see the, the discoloration where the exhaust valve is that's the one that's leaking a little bit versus one that's in better shape we might look at the heads that came off the 18 and I might swap them out got a 12 millimeter socket we're just gonna buzz these loose Ooh, that was actually loose. That's not good. Okay. Okay. So, looking at the uh, head, everything looks okay. I don't see any cracked parts on it. You can see by the discoloration where the oil was going through the return and leaking out. We can just tell the difference on the sound on how much looser that head was in this one. See, this one's, this jug's tight. And on this one, we actually pulled the head gasket up. You can tell that one cylinder is, it's either burning oil or it was just leaking into the cylinder. The thing that I've been wondering about, so here's the 18, and right there is the 16. You can kind of see the different designs too. Notice this one actually has an air vent. Okay, we got it zeroed. Now, I'm interested to see this. I think these are the same size. I think these are the same size, just the bore or the, uh, the jets are different. So on this one, we have 71.89 on the 18. It is a little different. I was wrong. Okay, we're gonna zero it. For some reason, this Pittsburgh uh, caliber has went two inches. Actually, it's just all over the place. We'll have to pull the battery and do a reset. I wonder what kind of warranty they have on these tools. How am I supposed to do a 
high quality YouTube video of this caliper. Won't even turn on. Let me see if I can get find a tape measure real quick. Comes to right about the S. On the 18, yeah, I'm sure. yeah, that burns me up. Now, let's see what the difference is. So, roughly, we are. I would say 71, maybe 73 millimeters on the bore on that one. And then we are at maybe 68 for the 16 horsepower. So there's definitely a difference. I will have to use the 16 horsepowers heartbreaker. All right, here's the bore. On the 16, it's smooth and it still has etching on it. Definitely got some carbon built up on that side. Definitely got some oil seepage on that one. You can see it. Everything's going dead on me when you need it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's open up this seal kit that I got from eBay. Here we go. That's protected pretty good. All right, it does come with the gaskets. So you got the top and rear main seals. Looks like we got the intakes. Comes with a couple head gaskets. We got four head gaskets. Two exhaust. It looks like, oh, well it wasn't, I guess I cut through. Okay, you can see it, but there is some impressions on these. I'll just compare it to my OEM ones. And they are pretty much an exact fit, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so there's the two I'll be using. I'll set those aside. It's actually got new valve guide. Got intakes for a bigger engine. Two head gaskets. Or valve cover gaskets. And here's the ones I need for the intake. I'm gonna sort all this and then we'll get right back. All right, so they give you two valve guide seals. You do get the grommet for the breather. They give you two seals for the oil filter assembly, two seals for where the carburetor hooks up. This is another one, kind of like where the little spacer block goes. For some reason, they only gave me one seal for the uh, intake manifold where this hooks on. So that's unfortunate and I'll have to buy one. I get, did get the two head gaskets. They look to be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start assembling this. I was gonna reuse this one, but I just noticed the valve guide's pushed out. So my valve only opens, oh, maybe a millimeter. <laughs> That's no good. To me, it always seems like you run into things that you don't expect. So in this case, the, uh, what is it? This exhaust valve on this one wasn't even opening because the valve guide's pushed out of the head. So that would have to be uh, machined again. I mean, there's a way that you can just kind of tap it in place and then take a punch and punch the aluminum to hold it in. But that's, it's been run low on oil. So, what we're gonna do is just, I'm gonna go ahead and clean these heads up. And we're just gonna use the heads off the 18 on this 16.
the 12 millimeter. This is not to tighten them down. This is just to get the threads on. All right, now that I've got that other surface cleaned off, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the jug. First, we're gonna to torque these down though. I gotta look up the torque specs. All right, looked it up online and it's supposed to be 13.75 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank it to it. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's right or not. That feels really, really weak. I'm gonna verify that to make sure that's correct. All right, I've looked on multiple web pages and they're saying it's 165 inch pounds, which is roughly 14 foot pounds. So that's what they're torqued to. Gotta to take these old seals off. pain in the butt to get that RTV off. You don't have to have RTV around there. Just put a new washer on whenever you work on these. They're probably like $2 each. All right, these valve covers I'm setting to 70 inch pounds. Just gonna place this new gasket. Let's go ahead and we're gonna get this pin out and then we're gonna go ahead and replace this seal just while we're here. There it goes. All right, old seal's out. I'm gonna clean up the shaft right here a little bit. Go ahead and don't 
don't. Well, ideally you want something to go over this and tap it in. All I gotta say is thank goodness we can uh, edit. Y'all didn't see that? I need to find a smaller hammer. Work. Okay, I found something that works good. <clears throat> I just took a clothespin, took it apart, and angled it so it hits just the outside edge, and I went all the way around to get it to go recessed where it needs to be. All right, next thing on the agenda is we need to get the flywheel back on. All right. I don't know if you can see in there, I have re-glued every magnet back onto this flywheel using a two-part epoxy. All right, the parts finally came in, the intake gaskets. Apparently they were on back order. So we're going to bolt the flywheel down. We're going to torque that with the impact gun. And uh, we're going to get the uh, intake gaskets on, intake on. I'm going to have to put the uh, coils on the uh, machine, the thunder makers. And uh, we're going to get everything bolted onto it. This has been a very long project because of the uh, I guess the scarcity of the parts and I'm looking forward to getting this done anyway we're gonna be going on a time lapse for this because I don't want to have to currently constantly change the camera angles and stuff like that so